Hello everyone and welcome to this Pearson English webinar. Thank you for joining us today. You can also join the conversation online with the hashtag ready for webinars. Please remember this session is recorded and the recording will be made available via our YouTube channel after the event. Also, every participant will receive a certificate of attendance. Please submit any questions you have in the chat box and we will answer these at the end of the session. Without further delay, I'm excited to hand over to Sarah who's going to tell us about STEAM techniques for teaching. Thank you, Sarah, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Charlie. Um, I'm really happy to be doing this webinar today. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's so exciting to be talking about STEAM again, an area I love and um, I'm really excited. There are so many teachers around the world who are interested in STEAM. Um, we've got 262 participants now, so that's great. So today I'd like to urge you to use the chat box as much as you like. Um, I'll be following it. I'll be asking some questions so you can answer there. You can ask your own questions, contribute with any ideas related to the session, um, anything you'd like to share um, or answer or ask so we can make it nice and interactive. So um, you might even need a piece of paper and a pen or a word processor open if you really want to get into it because we're going to be jotting down some notes and the idea is to come up with a plan. The aim of this session is that you're going to end up with an action plan to put into practice. Because this webinar is all about techniques that confident STEAM teachers possess, you're going to go away with an action plan of five tips or techniques that you choose that you think will help you become a more confident teacher using STEAM. So I hope that sounds good to you. And remember that this is STEAM in language teaching contexts. So we've got a lot involved. We've got STEAM, there's language teaching, there's tips and techniques, there's confidence building. So you're getting a four for the price of one offer here. You'll take part in a STEAM investigation about this so that we can actually see how STEAM works while we do it. So um, this is the agenda for today. The first thing I'm gonna do is be presenting our STEAM investigation. Um, the steps that we're going to take, and these are gonna be the steps that we usually take in a classroom where we're using STEAM so we can experience what it's like. And while we take these steps, our focus will be the tips and techniques that confident teachers use when using STEAM in a language classroom. And finally, we're gonna be creating those action plans that you will take away with you, hopefully. So first of all, what is STEAM for those of you who perhaps are not familiar with the term? It's an acronym that stands for science, technology, engineering, arts and design, and maths. Okay, that's the acronym. Hello, everyone. Yes, I can see everyone greeting there from all over the world. Oh, Chaco, Argentina. That's where I'm based in Argentina, but in Buenos Aires. So for our STEAM investigation, we're going to be using these steps that you can see on the screen. These are going to guide our investigation. These are the steps that we normally take when we are using STEAM in the classroom, when we're doing a STEAM project, a STEAM challenge, a STEAM investigation. Um, so we're going to go into these steps in depth later. But first, our learners will listen and watch as we present the challenge. Then they will, um, we will ask them to plan or predict. So most of the time, if the experience is science-based, it will normally be predict, predict what will happen in this experiment, for example. But if it's more engineering-based, then it probably will be plan, plan what you're going to create later. Um, so in this stage, in the second stage, they will hypothesize, brainstorm, do some research. In the third stage, our learners will explore or create. So that's what we're gonna be doing today as well. We're gonna go through these steps. Um, in the fourth step, we're going to be recording our findings or documenting and, re and comparing with our initial plans. This is a part of the scientific process. Scientists jot down their notes and compare their findings. And lastly, we'll present our action plans and uh, we'll reflect 
what we have been looking at in the session. So I hope that sounds good to you. We've got those five steps that are the five steps we usually use in a STEAM classroom. Um, and by the way, you can find this poster on the Pearson Experiences website. You've got the link on the slide um, in the STEAM section. So you can print this poster out and use it in your classroom as a reminder for how to carry out STEAM activities. It's useful to remind yourself and your learners about what you're doing and, and what steps you're going to be following. Um, so, they, so that not only you are confident with these steps because you've got that reminder on your poster, but also your learners are fully aware of what they're expected to do before they begin. They know they're gonna be going through these steps. And, um, and as you go through each step, you can refer to the poster. So learners notice where they are in the process because process is an, in, an important word in STEAM. We want learners to learn the skills that are behind these steps, how to predict, how to plan, that it's important to do that. It's important to compare your results to your predictions. So all that um, comes together when you've got that, that plan with you. Um, so if you would like to uh, take a look at that plan in depth, you can uh, have a look at it on the Pearson Experiences website. So um, we'll start with step number one. So we're going to start at the beginning, a very good place to start, isn't it? So step number one, listen and watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the challenge or the problem. I'm going to pose a question. And in our case today, our question is, how can we become confident STEAM teachers using five techniques? So this is our big question that we want to remember throughout our session. And you will always have that one big question that you're going to remember in your lesson and that you want your learners to answer at the end. So that's our big STEAM challenge today. How can we become confident STEAM teachers using five techniques? techniques. It's our direction. We start with a question, a problem, something to solve, something to do. Um, that's the main aim of our investigation. But then um, in this step, we also want to demonstrate some steps. Maybe we demonstrate an example so that our learners uh, are clear about what they're going to be doing. And we make sure that everyone is on the right track and understands what they're going to do. So at this stage, what I need to explain is that you're going to be writing an action plan for yourself that answers this question. How can we become confident STEAM teachers using five techniques? But you also need to know a few things about those keywords. And those keywords there are STEAM. What is STEAM? What is a technique? What is confidence? Can you count to five? You need to know how to count to five to be able to write your action plan that has five techniques, not four, not six, five. Um, and of course, the question, why? Why do we want to do this? Why do we want to come up with an action plan that will respond to this question? So that's always a good question to ask um, or, or your students uh, might ask you. Why do we want to do this? Why is this important? Well, we can turn it around. Why do you think this is important? Why do you think we should be learning about this? Right. So um, we already know what STEAM is. It's an acronym standing for science, technology, engineering, art and design and maths. A technique, if you want, we could look for these definitions in a dictionary. I looked up in Longman Dictionary, a special way of doing something or a method, that's a technique. So we're going to be looking at special ways of doing STEAM in our classroom. And what's confidence? Because the aim is to build confidence. Um, belief in yourself, the belief that you have the ability to do things well or deal with situations successfully. So we're gonna be successful at doing STEAM by using this special way of doing it. We need to count to five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is just a, an example to show in the classroom, you would have to make sure that your learners can count to five. Okay, and why? Why? Okay, um, this might be a question that, that your students will ask or that you will answer. Um, why do we want to deal with this question in particular? Well, who here, if you could write in the chat box, who here has had training 
for using STEAM in language teaching? Who has had professional preparation to teach language using STEAM? Anyone here? Not me, okay. Anyone? Has anyone had training or professional preparation using STEAM in a language classroom? Unfortunately, no. Okay, lots of no's. Okay, yeah. So many times, teachers don't feel confident because we have not had any training or preparation. And now this is a big word and everybody's talking about STEAM. But what is it and how do we do it? Okay, so we need to, to learn those techniques that will help us become more confident. Another issue is lack of confidence in content knowledge in the STEAM subject. Some teachers feel ill-prepared to teach science or maths or engineering content because they feel that they have little understanding about science or engineering. That's a big word. Um, how do we do that in a language classroom? But don't stress. We'll work on that today. So what we want to do in this step is to give a basic explanation about the terms, demonstrate some concepts first to clarify them. Students may need these for their own exploration, but we want them to be sure about what they're gonna be doing first. Um, what I do not want to explain though, is the main thing that I want you to discover today. So the main point to discover today is how to become confident language teachers using STEAM. So I will not explain that. I will explain the key word, but I will not explain the answer to the question. Never explain the main bit. That is the bit we want our students to explore and come to conclusions uh, themselves. You're going to come to your own conclusions about becoming confident and the techniques that you can use. But if you explain the main point, you're just lecturing. You're giving a science class and you're explaining how this science works. And that's not STEAM. STEAM is discovering. So it's not um, having the teacher knowing all about this science concept and standing at the front of the class and explaining it. OK, it's a point of giving this question to your students and letting them discover it and explore it themselves. Um, let them play with the idea. If you explain the concept of, let's say, gravity before they play with the idea of gravity in an experiment, then you will be ruining their STEAM experience. Don't explain the main thing. If you want them to learn about gravity, don't explain gravity. Let them play with it first. Let's see what conclusions they come to and see how similar that is to what gravity actually is. Um, if you explain what they have to do step by step, we're going to make a sundial, let's say, and you explain it step by step, then that is a craft. It's not steam. So if you want them to make sundials, you'll give them lots of materials and they will try and discover how to make the sundial for themselves. And um, so there's a big difference between giving an answer, going step by step and saying how to do something to what steam actually is. Um, for example, build a tower that can hold three books. You build a tower that can hold three books. If you explain what materials to use and how tall it should be, how heavy or light the book should be, and you do it for them in front of their eyes, you're ruining the experience for them. It's them who should be doing that. Um, all of that is what you want them to be discovering. So in step two, um, what we're going to do is we're going to have our learners plan and predict the answers to the main question. So um, we might ask ourselves questions that lead up to the main questions. I've got three questions I would like you to answer here and I will walk you through them. So please use the chat box for your answers. For the first question, I'm going to ask you to reply, not using chat box, using your body. I want you to express through your body. So give me a movement or an action or become a statue or use a facial expression or a gesture to show how you feel about STEAM right now. The question is, how do you feel about STEAM right now? Ready? Show it through your body. One, two, three, go. That's how I feel about STEAM now. Um, I would love to be seeing you right now. <laughs> you could relax if you actually did that. I wonder how many of you actually did it when I can't see you. I know that in a conference hall, 
you would have felt like you had to. But here, mm, oh no, no way I'm doing that at home. <laughs> I know. Okay, so um, anyway, I hope how you feel about STEAM right now will be different to how you will feel at the end of the session. Will you grow in confidence? Whether your body expressed confidence already, I hope you do grow a little more in confidence. And if you're lacking confidence, you're unsure, you're uneasy about it, I really do hope this session helps you with the five techniques you will plan for yourself. So I might ask you to express through your body, or I might ask you to write a poem about how you feel right now so that we can compare it later against a new poem at the end of the session. And that will give the A for arts. The arts is not only about drawing or painting. It also includes poetry, movement, music, drama, photography. So don't forget the A in STEAM is not just drawing. Okay, so uh, you can include drama. Uh, but. I could also ask you to write in the chat box. So could you just do that now so that I can read you as I can't see you, but I can read you. How do you feel about STEAM right now? Someone said frown before they frowned. Um, so how do you feel about STEAM right now? Could you write that in the chat box so I can read you? Nervous, clueless, great, someone says. Frozen, <laughs> okay, very interesting. Good, confused. Oh no, I hope you're not confused at the end of the session. Okay, brain job, that sounds nice. Better now, okay, a bit more. More confident than before, but someone says good because it's just been 18 minutes since we began. So we've got time to build that confidence, good. Confused, wondering, confused but with hope. That's lovely, good. Complicated, oh God, okay, all right, we'll, we'll get better now, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll build on this confidence. So, again in the chat box, could you please try and predict some answers to the second question? What do you think are some techniques that confidence Dean teachers use? Hmm, what a difficult question, isn't it? What do you think are some techniques that confidence Dean teachers use? I've got 15 techniques to show you later. So there are, there are lots. Planning, planning is important. Experiments, humor, that's lovely. Practice, make students do something. Make it interactive, good. Questioning, big word in STEAM. Project, inquiry-based learning, yes, engaging, using realia, PBL, brainstorming, role plays, lovely answers, good. So you see? This is getting better and better already. Empowering, lovely. Third question, how can we find out? That's always a good question to ask when you start a STEAM experiment, a STEAM investigation, a STEAM challenge, a STEAM problem. How can we find out? Okay. Read books involving involving into process. So that's the answer to the other question, yes. How can we find out? the answer to our question. We've got our big question. How can we find out? Webinars, that's a good idea. We're in one now. Planning, search, explore, do it yourself. Good. Investigate online, sharing, cooperating, doing experiments <laughs> from you. Oh, hello, Eleni. How are you? Uh, Eleni is in Greece. Um, okay. So um, there is a saying that the best teachers are those who show you where to look but don't tell you what to see. If someone is telling you what to see, they're lecturing, they're indoctrinating you, they're telling you what you've got to see there. You aren't being taught to think, you're being told what to think. But curiosity is a powerful force and we want to use that in the classroom. If you tell someone where to look and let them observe, they're far more likely to become interested. If you tell them what to see, why would they bother to look? The curiosity is gone. There's nothing there for them. That's the same as explaining that doing the whole experiment at the beginning yourself. There's nothing else there for them to do. There's no more curiosity. It's gone. But here, it's even better because we start by asking children to think for themselves where they could look rather than telling them where to look. So we're going one step further in this quote, 
about the best teachers are those who show you where to look but don't tell you what to see. We're asking them, where can you look? And then what can you see? So it's even better. How can we find out? Um, we could also ask some confident STEAM teachers what their techniques are. Do they have any tips that they can uh, give us? What uh, We could conduct some research. We could design a questionnaire. Um, we could attend a webinar. So here we are. An easy answer to that question is attend this webinar. We're using technology to do this research. So that's the T in STEAM. Okay. So let's think of a confident teacher. A confident teacher who uses STEAM in his or her language classrooms. What does this teacher look like? What impression does this teacher give? What techniques does this teacher use? That's what we want to know. What tips can he or she give us? What are some teacher approved strat strategies? Well, this confident STEAM teacher has got 15 techniques for you. So bear with me, 15 tips and techniques uh, for you to choose your favorite five, your big five, because you're going to answer the question, how can I become a confident STEAM teacher using five techniques? Five techniques that you could do with that you think will be helpful for yourself, whether you're already teaching using STEAM or you have not started yet. What would you bear in mind if you did start teaching using STEAM? So um, these are some of the techniques. Let's start with these. So first of all, in STEAM, the teacher's role is seen as facilitator, guide, nurturer of thinking monitor, even a learner. A teacher using STEAM does not need to be an expert. We're language teachers. We're not science teachers, engineers, mathematicians, technology developers. We are English teachers. We don't need to be experts. This is really important to understand so that you don't stress. What does the teacher need to know? The basics. You don't need to know a lot about science. You don't need to have special equipment to teach children about STEAM. You could, but not necessarily. Your role is one of, yes, Dennis, facilitators. Not a spoon feeder of information and facts and answers, not a bearer of knowledge and information. STEAM is about asking questions and trying to figure how things work. It's not important what facts we know. Just try and get it to work. So think about this. Do you need to develop your teacher role in the classroom? Do you feel this is something you could work on? Do you tend to spoon feed? Do you tend to give the answers? Do you tend to lecture a lot? Perhaps it's something that you need to remember. Well, if it is, jot it down as one of those five techniques you want to put on your list of those that will develop your confidence. Now, we are language teachers, so we're important, we're interested in language. This is something as language teachers worry about a lot. Don't you worry that you need them to use language? You know, not just build a tower, not just do an experiment, but use language while you're doing it. Otherwise, they could go off and do STEAM in other subjects. Why would we do it in our English lesson? So in terms of language, we need to make sure our learners know the language that they need to complete the challenge. So preview vocabulary with your students before they begin building or experimenting. And this doesn't need to be complex. It doesn't need to be quantum physics language. OK, that's not what we're talking about. It can be very, very simple. Look at this example. This, is, this example is taken from Pearson's course English code, which is excellent. And it's got a very strong STEAM feature throughout. But then you've got these very focused STEAM activities in the experimental lab section of the book. And uh, this experiment is about objects that sink or float. So what we're going to ask our learners to do is to um, get some objects of different materials. Um, they're made of some objects that are made of plastic, some made of wood, some made of metal, some made of fabric. And um, 
And they're going to put those objects inside a tub of water and they're going to discover which float and which sink. But before they actually do the experiment, what are we going to do? They're going to listen and watch. We're going to explain what we're going to do. We're going to show the material that we're going to be using. Then they're going to predict what they think will happen. That's step number two. They're going to predict. So in their books, they will be writing down their predictions. If they predict whether the um, we've got a plastic boat there, for example. So if the plastic boat will float or will sink, they'll have to think about that. They don't know anything about this yet. They're just going to predict. What do they think? They might hold the object and see how heavy they are because uh, sometimes we think, okay, if it's heavy, it's going to float, it's going to sink, isn't it? Not necessarily. Um, so let them hold the objects, make it concrete for them, feel them, see how heavy they are. Will they float or will they sink? What do they think first? And then once they've done it, they will compare their answers to their conclusions. So they are going to be using language like it floats, it sinks, it's made of plastic, wood, metal. Is it complex language? No. And if you can see that uh, picture well enough, on you've got the experiment time section on the right, but on the left of it, so before actually doing this experiment, you've got a whole section dedicated to this language. So it is language based. That is important. Otherwise, why don't they go and do their STEAM in their science lesson or go and do their STEAM in their maths lesson? Well, no, they're doing STEAM in your language classes because you have all that language that you can teach them. And it's very rich language and they can express themselves using that language because they've seen all that language before. It's in their books for them. So you're scaffolding well, you're guiding them well. Another thing you can do is have an SOS board so you can draw a board on the on the uh, on a poster on the on your board or have a piece of paper like a poster that says SOS on it and what you do in there is you add all that language that they're going to use in that experiment to make sure that they've got somewhere to look for that language that's their SOS board so it's the the helpful board they're asking for SOS i need help with this language that i don't remember there it is for you so you can look at it. So you can do that with young learners um, to remind them of that language that you expect them to use. Um, we want them to develop that vocabulary to talk about the words, to, to talk about what they know and what they're experiencing. So can you tell with this example that if you scaffold language well, your learners will be able to use it? So we don't need to worry that, oh, they're doing the experiment, lovely, but they're not using any English. OK, we want them to use the English as well. Um, so if you feel that your learners struggle with using English while they're doing STEAM or hands on work, maybe this is one of those techniques you need to write down. OK. Now, one that I really, really love is using the language of STEAM, speaking STEAM language. So there's a step before looking at the language your learners will use, which is using STEAM language yourself. If you don't use STEAM language, your learners won't use STEAM language. Expose your learners to STEAM language as much as possible so that they can incorporate that language into their possibilities of communicating. And I love this one. It doesn't have to be complex. Words like let's observe, let's predict, compare, experiment, test, label, something scientists do, investigate, hypothesize. You can use all those words that are STEAM-based, science-based mostly. Um, what do you think will happen? What did you observe when you're asking them questions? I'm going to record your findings, not just write them down. I'm going to record your findings. So all those words are important to use so that they're immersed in a context which is very STEAM based and even use STEAM praise, praise in a STEAM way, not just the generalized, very good, well done, excellent, but also good thinking. Oh, you're a great scientist. You're a great mathematician. So instilling a love of science and a belief that I am a scientist. That's a really powerful attitude to plant in young children. Or going further, if you're doing a STEAM experiment about 
weather, call them meteorologists, give them a name. If they're building something, call them engineers, okay? Um, you're a great problem solver when they've discovered the answer to a question. That is very powerful. Um, so the language of STEAM is an interesting one to add. Know the sequence of STEAM steps. So these we know about. These are the ones that I showed you, and those are the ones that we're going through right now. Now we're in step three. We're exploring, okay? And we're going to start creating our action plan. Um, so know the STEAM steps so that you know where you are. You don't jump over any. Remember always there's a previous step to actually doing the experiment or the challenge, which is plan or predict. There's always that previous step, but there always has to be a previous step to that, which is children need to know what they have to do. And children know, need to know where they're going. and They need to really understand it and they need to know the language. So we need to do all that first, don't we, before we actually go in uh, to the experimenting or the creating. That is step three. So it's in the middle. We've got the actual STEAM activity in the middle. And you've got two steps before that and two steps after that. So you've got to keep that in mind. Now, really importantly, don't give away the answers. In terms of scaffolding for the understanding of what learners need to do, demonstrate, remember, as I said at the beginning, demonstrate, but don't give away the answer to the question. We always want to go that step further and give them the answer. Don't do that. Facilitate problem solving inquiry. This is inquiry based teaching. Some of you said this in your techniques that you wrote in the chat box. Remember not to ruin it for them. Let them find out. Do you tend to help too much? You want to show them how to do the experiment? You want to give them the answers because you feel for them? <laughs> you are afraid you'll, you're being bad if you don't, if, if, if they, that they'll feel bad if they don't do it the right way. Well, this is the technique you need to master. Um, you don't want to give away the answers. Let them try. And we're going to see in a, in a bit that something important is trial and error. And if you make a mistake, then, well, we persevere, we go on, we try again. That's part of STEAM too. So don't give them the answers. Let them try it for themselves. Master your questioning technique. Quite a complex one. This is one of the most difficult points that I find. To fill to fulfill the role of nurturer of thinking, to get them to do this inquiry, we need to look at questioning techniques. We want to encourage thinking and we want to increase student engagement. So for instruction to be successful in facilitating uh, students thinking about these problems, we need to use strong questioning techniques. You can see those questions on the slide. This is the inquiry cycle. There are lots of different inquiry cycles that you can find, and you'll have different questions on those, so you can search for others. Um, but it's important to have versatile questions that can be used in almost any STEAM challenge. So you keep those up your sleeve, and then you can bring them out when you need them. And that will help you build your own confidence because you start feeling safe with those same questions that you can repeat. Things like, how can we find out? That's a question that you can ask for any STEAM activity you're gonna be doing. What are your predictions or what is your plan? That can be a question that you always ask. So keep those in mind, remember those. What happened is a question you can always ask. It doesn't matter what STEAM activity you're doing. What do you see or what do you hear depending on the activity? But those are all very versatile and you can use them in almost any exploration. And it also helps our language learners because they hear the same type of question every time. If you change the questions around a lot, then it might be difficult for the younger ones. So that helps them understand the question and they're more able to answer those questions successfully because they know what's, what's coming. There's repetition of the same types of questions. So I suggest you pick your favorite questions that you feel that would be used in different STEAM experiences, write them down so that you can refer to those in class um, so that they're the same ones. Uh, and then you can add specific questions depending on the activity as you become more confident and your students are more confident as well. Now, it's really important to move away from the front of the classroom. If you expect all your learners to be independent, innovative, critical thinkers, who will do exactly as you say, then that won't work. 
They shouldn't be doing exactly what you say. Forget about that. As it is not you who will spoon feed or give the answers or show the step by step for learners to carry out a craft, you have to move away from the front of the classroom. It just goes hand in hand. Move from the spotlight. Your learners are in the spotlight now. Let them be responsible for their own learning. It's hands on, it's student centered. The result perhaps is louder, messier, but it empowers learners and it engages them in their own learning. So provide hands-on and experiential learning and believe in your students. You don't need to be there, standing there and controlling everything they do. Let them do it. Transfer the control of the learning process onto them and guide from the sidelines, if you like. And importantly, help, help them become more self-sufficient. They don't need you all the time. They can try by themselves. All right. Oh, um, I missed one there, I think. Increase collaboration skills. Well, that goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Use a collaborative approach. Get comfortable with teamwork. Get your learners to be comfortable with teamwork. Of course, once you're back in the classroom, or if you are back in the classroom, um, if we don't, we have to have social distancing, well, that becomes a big problem with teamwork. But uh, basically, STEAM would work a lot on not individualized learning, but collaboration. So you can actively teach teamwork by um, helping them to learn these skills, turn taking, praising others, teach them to say, I like your idea, or let's try that to be good team players. And you can write those words on your SOS board uh, to remind them of that language as well. So. Embrace failure. Remember I said, don't explain everything. Don't give them all the answers. Let them try. And if it goes bad, well, it's part of the process of learning. Embrace failure as a necessary part of learning and growing. That is, accept failure, taking risks, experimenting, knowing that they might not get it right is fine. But everyone in the classroom should feel safe in taking risks. You too. Sometimes we learn from what we do wrong right? Uh, more than from what we do right. And scientists and engineers learn a lot from their mistakes. And that's an example that we want to take into the classroom. Um, so accept some drawbacks. And here comes your questioning again. Because when your students um, attempts don't initially go right, or as planned, because they planned, they predicted that's step two. They're going to plan or predict, but then when they do it, if it doesn't come out as planned or as predicted, encourage them to become curious and ask questions. Okay, what went wrong? What could we do differently? What else can you try? Were the results the same as your predictions? What was different? How was it different? Reassure your students that it's okay if their hypothesis ends up being proven wrong because they've learned from it. Sometimes they come up with a great idea for a design of a boat that should float and it ends up being a complete failure and it, it sinks in a second. But they've learned what doesn't work and that is just as valuable because now they'll do it in a different way. So they've learned from that experience of having a, designed a boat that did not work at all. So in this example, this is how can I build a bridge? Learners are going to be using popsicle sticks and clay and joining them together to make triangles like those in the picture on the slide. Um, those triangles are going to make the bridge and they're going to use a ruler as the deck of the bridge. And they're going to test the strength of their bridge by placing coins on it so that they can say there are seven triangles in my bridge. I can um, it can carry five coins, whatever, whatever comes out of their experiment. So this sentence is going to be different according to what came out in their own experiences, in their groups. So let them try. And if their um, bridges fall or they're not very strong and just put one coin on it and it falls apart, well, that's great. Then they can ask themselves what they can do to make it better. So it's good, it's positive to make mistakes as well. This is another example taken from English Code Pearson's course, which is lovely. 
Um, but of course, you see again that before where it says experiment time, before that, you've got an explanation about why triangles work very well for bridges and on the previous page as well. And that makes it make bridges very strong, that shape. Mm -hmm. So we want to instill lifelong learning. Remember the first tip about developing the role of the teacher? When it comes to STEAM, you're still a learner. So you want to instill a love for learning because you're giving that example too. So be prepared to learn, prepare to fail, and learn even more in the process of failing and not failing. Failing and not failing sometimes, sometimes failing, sometimes not. Show when you make a mistake. If you make a mistake, make a big deal about it. Oh, look, I made a mistake. How can I solve this? What did I do? Okay, so how can I do it differently so I can... So, so I don't do it wrong this time. Oh, okay, maybe I can do this. So show your thinking. Speak while you're um, you're solving that problem, whether it's a steam problem or not. It, your uh, pen doesn't work. <laughs> what can we do about that? Okay, whatever problem you have in your classroom, show how you think through that problem and and come to a, a conclusion. Um, when you're moving away from the front of the classroom, you're shifting to a teacher as learner position. So you don't need to be an expert. You're part of this as well. You're not an expert lecturing about science. Don't worry. You're still an English teacher and you're still learning too with your students. So don't be afraid. You don't need to know all the answers. Evolve and grow as a learner with them and show that you're the teacher and you're still learning. And when they're your age, they're still going to be learning as well. Identify STEAM that you're doing already. What you're doing already in your language classrooms that relate to STEAM. Now, can you think of anything that, um, that you do in your classroom that, uh, that relates to STEAM? Don't make it something different to what you do. Link it. So... Um, you don't need to leave everything you're doing because you're suddenly going to do STEAM. In fact, what you're doing already, for example, who teaches shapes in English? Use the chat box, please. If you use shapes in English. Okay, someone says predicting. You ask your student to predict. Fantastic. So you're doing part of STEAM there. Do you teach shapes? Do you teach uh, square, circle, triangle, rectangle? Okay, maths. That's part of maths. Has anyone ever taught a unit about space or planets? Okay, there you go. Um, do you teach your learners to count in English or to write numbers? Yeah, okay, there you go. So you're already doing some steam in your lessons, okay? So identify what you're doing already and don't make it something completely different, okay? You're already doing something. Now let's see how we can turn that into a proper steam challenge, but you're already doing part of that. It's not something totally different to what you're already doing. Another thing is to use guided materials at first. So um, select course books with guided teaching notes that will help you with your plans and your execution of all this. So imagine you're doing a unit on space, astronauts, planets, and, um, oh, sorry, did I go back there? Um, and you thought, oh, I'll do, um, we'll do an investigation about rockets. That sounds great. And we'll make rockets and we'll learn how rockets work. Okay, fantastic idea, but would you know how to even start? Okay, what, what, would you know what to do? Would you have any idea where to start, how to make a rocket? What, what would you explain about rockets? What are you actually trying to discover about rockets? Not just making a craft, that's one thing. Step by step, okay, get this, and then stick this on it and cut that there and you make a rocket. No, we're not talking about that. Okay, it's a great plan, but how do you execute it in the classroom? So here we have an example where learners are going to make their own rockets and you've got all the explanation for the teacher, all the notes, and you've got all the alternatives, and you've got all the explanation about how this works. All right. Um, adapt to unplug STEAM if you need to, if you don't have computers and robots, you know, to do robotics or programming. You don't need all that, sensors and stuff. If you have them, fine, you can do STEAM with that. But if you don't, language teachers usually don't have all that. Um, in some contexts, you might have computers or tablets that you can use, fine, that's great. You can take photographs, do some photography, fantastic. But if you haven't, 
You can always do unplug steam. You can have a learner become a robot and you can do coding without a robot. You don't have to do coding, but if you wanted to, you could code a person uh, as a robot. You don't need the robot itself. Um, assess growth mindset and skills. So because all this is quite different to standing in front of a class and lecturing, expectations for assessment need to be different too. So we're looking at process, we're looking at developing skills, we're looking at how unique those solutions were, uh, being able to use language, of course, as well. So we're assessing the language in STEAM, uh, the normal language that we usually use in class, as it's connected to what you're working on, but also problem solving, critical thinking. So we need to um, assess all that too. And really importantly, be a role model. Be an inspiring leader, a role model for your students. Be positive, enthusiastic about what students are learning and how they're learning it. Be passionate in your teaching. Get excited so that they get excited too. And take risks yourself and fail yourself and show that. Show bravery in trying out something new and then they'll copy that. Be confident and they will be confident too. So these are the 15 tips that I brought to you today. Have you selected your five favorite? I hope you have provide, uh, found your big five. Okay, so what we would do, step four, would be recording, comparing findings with initial predictions. In this case, I would ask you, are they the same to those techniques that you thought about at the beginning? Are they completely different? Perhaps they're similar. And, um, the other thing I would do in this step while we're recording findings and we're comparing is to start creating that final action plan. So have you thought about those five techniques that you plan to use to become a more confident teacher using STEAM in your language teaching? And I would ask you if we had more time to sequence them. I would say, what are you gonna start with? What are you gonna do first? Okay, this is the one that I really need to develop. I'm going to start with this one. Or I want to start with this one because it's very simple and I need to start small because I've never used STEAM before. Fantastic. So you would sequence them. And there you've got your maths again. Not only finding five techniques, think of this as uh, if you were using it in a young learner classroom. Uh, five uh, maths and also sequencing. Sequencing is a maths concept. Okay. So... Um, the last thing I would ask you to do is to present, share your action plan, which I won't because we haven't got enough time, but I hope you've got your action plan of five techniques that you would like to use that you think would be useful for yourself. And I would ask you in class to reflect. How well did you work with your team? Because most of the time, STEAM is going to be collaborative. How well did you work in your group? Um, how will you improve this plan of action as you continue teaching using STEAM? How do you feel about STEAM now? But that one, I do want the answer to. So could you use the chat box and tell me, how do you, use, how do you feel about STEAM now? A bit better? The same as at the beginning? Totally confused? Or fantastic? You're ready to dive into the classroom using STEAM to teach language. How do you feel now? Did those techniques help? You really feel better, that's lovely, Philip. I'm really, really glad. Much better, fantastic. Ooh, sounds good. More confident, love it. Okay, fantastic. Those are lovely, lovely responses. Incredible, that's lovely. Okay, so remember you can get your STEAM poster. This was our STEAM investigations. At the end, you go back to the question. You go back to the question. How can you become confident STEAM teachers doing five techniques? So you would all present your idea and your plan. Then you would have to try it out in your classrooms and come back to your initial plan and see if there's anything you need to change. So don't be afraid of new ideas. Uh, I think you aren't afraid of new ideas because otherwise you wouldn't be here. But be afraid of old ideas because they keep you where you are and stop you from growing and moving forward. Concentrate on where you want to go, not on what you fear. So if you want to learn any more about STEAM, you can go into the Pearson Experiences page where you have pocket guides to, to download and some articles and some uh, uh, the poster there. You've got Pearson's blog where you can read a lot about STEAM as well. We've got um, blog posts there for you. And if you want to learn more about English Code, which is the course book that I use for the examples, that's where you can find it. So I think we've got a few minutes for questions. Hello, Sarah. Yes, we do have a few minutes. Thank you so much. Okay. For that.
uh, so interesting to see and good to see people uh, turning around from confusion to confidence. Thank you. Uh, we've had a few Great. questions. Um, probably only got about three minutes for these, but um, one thing, have you got a clarification between STEAM and CLIL? What's the difference? Okay, okay, that's a, a common, you know, that there's this, it, it does overlap a lot. CLIL and STEAM do overlap, of course, because in STEAM you've got all that content and you're teaching language through that content, which is scientific or technology-based or arts-based. Um, but mainly the biggest difference is that STEAM is going to be more hands-on, where you want learners to actually do something with that information. So it's not uh, perhaps uh, reading and understanding a text about content would not be STEAM. You would have to actually do something with that. It will always be hands-on. You always need to do an experiment to try something out and discover something for yourself. Perhaps CLIL will give you the answers because you have the information there and it will tell you all about this. We want to learn about something and we learn about it. But here, you've actually got to discover it for yourself. So that's one of the big differences between STEAM and CLIL. But it does overlap a lot as well. But I think the main difference is the hands-on and the discovery, the inquiry in STEAM. Brilliant, thank you. And we've got a, uh, some people so keen to, to start using STEAM. Might you have some tips for teaching primary students online using STEAM? Okay, I knew that. Share? I knew that question would come up uh, because everyone around the world is doing this now. So, um, yes, the... the the way that I find is the best for online uh, when you're teaching STEAM is if you've got if you're using a, an asynchronous platform, what you can do is record your videos and do the look and listen step one um, on your video, so your learners can hear about what the question is, what the challenge is. Uh, you demonstrate a few little things without giving the exact answer at the end. Your learners can do it at home, make sure it's material that they have at home. So if you're using the popsicle sticks and clay, make sure that's something that they will probably have or they can get. Um, you can use toilet paper rolls a lot for STEAM activities. That's one of the best tools for, for STEAM. Um, but you need to make sure they've got the materials. They can send back their videos to you and you can watch how they have been able to find out the answer to a question or discover or whether it worked for them or not. So you can always do that. Um, if you, you're using a synchronous platform, then you can do it there and then if you're using Zoom or Meet or uh, whatever platform you're using, you can do it with them. Make sure everyone knows they have to bring their materials to that class and they can experiment at home and everyone can see everyone else's productions, which is lovely. So yes, it can be done. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. We've had somebody else asking whether this can be used in a technical course like accounting. And I'd say, yes, it can be because you're in control of the content of what you're teaching. So adapt it, the method to what you need it um, uh, for. So that is all we've got time for now. Um, Sarah, thank you so much uh, for putting together these slides and delivering them today. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I love speaking about STEAM, so I'm really happy We've got so many teachers here who have participated so much. Thank you, everyone. Lovely, Fantastic. lovely answers to the questions as well. Thanks for participating. And yes, and thank you uh, to all of you for joining us, taking the time out of your day uh, to learn about STEAM with Sarah. Uh, certificates will be sent out. Recordings will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And look out in the thank you email for a link to our virtual goodie bag. We have a whole plethora of useful links and further resources for you to dig deep into. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at a Pearson English webinar very soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.